Everybody, this is Perch, and it's time to take another look at a comic run and the sales figures and kind of see what we can learn from it. And this time, we have got a book that, uh, well, everybody knows, even people who are not into comics, The Walking Dead, which uh, which uh, was published uh, quite some time ago now. Actually, 2003 was when it came out. And, of course, as everybody knows, the comic was uh, turned into a really, really popular AMC show and then a number of spinoffs and everything else. And it, it, it's become one of those cultural things that just everybody's aware of, of what this is. And part, one, one thing that's notable is how much they did stick to a lot of the comic book storylines, both in getting uh, actors to kind of portray some of the, the famous people that we saw, and also just some of the bigger beats uh, that where characters were killed. We, we came to learn that nobody was safe with The Walking Dead. Now, originally, of course, the comic was the creation of Robert Kirkman, who started with Tony Moore, and then very, very rapidly uh, moved to uh, Charlie Adler, who basically stayed on the series the entire time. This comic, you know, you shouldn't expect much out of it, of course, because it uh, it was black and white, and as we all know, that doesn't sell in the U.S., but let's take a look. Oh. Hang on. What What is this? What? I Wait, can, can this be true? I look the, the trend... Go, going uh, 557% increase. I, l Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, of all the time I've been doing this, we finally, we have finally done it. We, we have, we're, we were here. It's, 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 we've, we've, su we've succeeded, everyone. I can't believe it. It's true. I apologize, but it, it really truly is miraculous. It's funny that when I posted up a little teaser of this graph, the first instinct of everyone was to tell me I had put it up backwards by accident. Um, yes, it, this is the unicorn. Uh, we have not seen this before, and uh, we're not going to see it again. Uh, <laughs> you know, Certainly not at this level. There are comics that have increased over time, no doubt about it. You could take a look at Saga, which I've done the video for. You can check it out in the playlist. Um, and Saga did have similar growth, but not like this. And this, keep in mind, this is an ongoing monthly and often uh, by, you know, every tw two issues a month comic book. But let's let's walk through it together because this is a joy. Of all the, the terrible comics people have been pushing me to do the analysis for, this is, is an absolute pleasure to be able to do one that, that is an unprecedented success. So let's, let's look at how much of a success it was. As I mentioned, this debuted in October 2003 to a very modest 7,266 copies in unit sales to retail shops. Comic review sites largely buried this comic when it first came out. There were certainly some that, that gave it uh, popular marks, but a lot of them, a lot of the, the big name popular sites called, oh great, another zombie book. Does Kirkman not have other ideas? Not looking forward to this one. Uh, I thought this guy was creative. Some really nasty things that were said by a lot of the big name comic review sites, many of which have pulled those reviews uh, because they look stupid now, but you can still find them on uh, web archive. Uh, but here's the catch. The sales for issue number one would wind up to be the third lowest of the entire run. So again, something that you do not see, issue number one would be the third lowest selling book of the entire series. So how good was all this? Well, you know, as I showed before, we have a trend of starting at 7,000 and moving up to 46,000 by the time we get to issue 99. Um, this was the very definition of slow and steady, almost zombie-like uh, <laughs> advancement of sales. This book certainly had uh, plateaus, as you can see. There's moments where it, it 
you know, it, it levels off for a bit of time, but it, it just always just keeps adding a thousand at a time and another thousand at a time. It just kept adding books and it, it, it just, this is an incredible first 99 issues. Um, if we look at the second half, it's, uh, it's, it's more, it's more flat and certainly more bumpy. So a couple things happened in the second half from issue 100 to issue ultimately 193 when the series ended. Uh, by the by the creator's own choice. So mostly it's flat. However, it's a little deceptive because we've got five, really four major spikes during this time period. We're going to talk about those and what's going on there. Uh, but it's worth noting that these these five spikes were huge spikes of sales. Uh, three times they were above three hundred thousand. One time is above uh, over seven hundred thousand. That was a that was a twenty five cent issue. So definitely a little bit of a I mean, you know, a catch there, but even uh, issue 150 managed to clock it in uh, close to 200,000. But if you if you can ignore this, and we are going to take those those spikes away, what you'll see is steady growth, moving from about 54,000 to 86,000, and then right in the last year of its run, a little bit less than the last year, but really the last nine months, the series began to drop. It actually. In the last nine months, it started to look like a typical Marvel or DC book in terms of how it was starting to shed sales. But then it did come back. So it, it, we have every reason to believe that if this title would have continued, it probably would have been a level like this. I don't believe it would have been in a free fall state. I think this title was often putting events out and then, and then just continuing to gain ground. If you look at the second half of the series run, it had a, a paltry 52% increase. So even though it's, it's because that first 99 issues is so mind blowing that the second um, any any comic would be thrilled with any increase at all. And the fact that this comic had a 52 percent increase and you notice the again the reason why we use these trend lines is it smooths out the bumps of those five big mega issues. Uh, it 52 percent increase is also unprecedented in, a, in a, an ongoing monthly comic. So if we look at the entire picture. Again, it's warped by those uh, by those big spikes. But here we are from issue one to issue 193, and, and you see steady, solid growth. You see for the second half of its life, this comic was solidly over the 50,000 mark. That would put it, and does put it, in some of the highest selling monthly books out in comics today. If we do a complete uh, trend analysis from number issue one to issue 193, it's 7,000 to 74,000. That is 957% increase over the book's entire run. And that's incredible. Like I, I that again, you're, you're not going to see anything like this. Now, in the past, we've talked, we've, we've talked about, we take out the number one issue because it, uh, you know, variant covers and over and all this stuff spikes the first issue. In this case, we almost have the opposite problem where you need to take out the first issue because it's too low, mm -hmm. but you have to do more than that because this title did not go strong right away. It took a long time for it to rise, but it was an incredibly steady, bedrock level book. Now, of course, it goes without saying, like I mentioned at the beginning, we had this television show coming out and the television show was very, very popular. Now you might say to yourself, well, a lot of this uh, success of the series is owed to the television show. It didn't hurt. But if you look here at this graph that's on the screen now, you see the dates down below. The little, uh, little blips there is the start of a new season of The Walking Dead. And what you see is, by and large, it definitely helped. It helped grow an audience. But the big growth happened long before there, there was a television series that hit. And in general, you know, it just so happened that a couple of these seasons corresponded with big issues that they were shipping. I, it's actually, that's not an accident. I'm sure the comic was coordinating very smartly because, uh, you know, Kirkman seems to not be an idiot. And he knows that when you have a new season come out, it's a good idea to put out an anniversary issue or do something with Loot Crate to kind of boost the overall brand. That's that's called good marketing. Not to, Some people have, have passed, I, I, I always hate it, they hand wave aside Kirkman's success as like, well, he got lucky because of that TV show. Clearly not. The graph and the growth of this comic uh, was well in hand long before the TV show came out. You see that the, uh, the sustainment of these numbers... I mean, they were working hand in hand, certainly with the AMC show, but it's it's not the case that that was driving everything. Before a single episode of the TV series aired, the series still had a trending increase of 343%. Again, these, these are silly numbers because they're so freaking high. Um, that is, uh, you're not going to see anything like this again.
It's just so nice. It just makes me happy inside. Anyway, let's take a look more. Uh, over the course of the entire book's run, yes, the series had an overall trend increase of 957%. During the comic's run, there were six times that the comic exceeded 100,000 in unit sales. And while a couple of these uh, anniversary issues certainly had gimmicks attached to them, um, there was never dozens and dozens of variants in play. There was not an incentive program. There was returnability at times. And uh, you also did have that 25 cent issue. You had a loot crate issue. But these are healthier ways to spike a number, I would argue. And you can see it in numbers because you didn't see things go into a free fall. After that big boost of a 350,000 selling comic, things dropped back to normal. But they, they, they continued to build from there. They didn't keep dropping. That's very different from what you see at the big two. So if we look at the first uh, 100 issues, just a little bit more detail. What I'm doing here is I'm showing you how it's rising every 10 issues or so. We go 7,000. It almost doubles over the course of the first 10 issues. It then continues to grow. Again, not, not crazily, but at issue 20, we're at just under 17,000. Issue uh, 30, we're at over 20,000. We then go to 22. We then go to 27. And, and as you see kind of this march, you know, issue 50, uh, was an anniversary issue, so that spiked up a little higher. But if you see this trend, it's just a slow, gradual increase. It's the, it's almost the exact opposite of what we see from normal comics, where you see the slow attrition, you see the slow decrease. This comic is doing the opposite. And you see it just go all the way here until finally, you know, we're getting to issue 99, where the comic's up at 55,000. Now, definitely, we some magic happened around issue, you know, 97, 96, where suddenly uh, we get a, a jump of about 20,000 in the sales, which is nothing to sneeze at. But even before that, you look at its climb from 7,000 to 31,000 by the time it is issue 90. That's an incredible, incredible run. Now, if we look at the second half, now you see, again, here's where you start to get some bumps of some other issues, but still, you see the same gradual increase happen for quite a while. We, we have the uh, issue 100 at 357,000, but then we're rising. We're going from about uh, low 60s to 76,000 by issue 110. We then hit uh, 319 for a special issue. We're down at 65,000. So we did dip, but then the comic grows right back again. It goes back to 71,000 by issue 130. We have this loot crate issue that uh, went to 326. But the new normal seemed to be settling between mid 60s and mid 70s. And when they would do these big anniversary issues, what you'll see is you don't see a you don't see a huge drop off of readership. You see either a stable point or a slight increase again. Where by the time we get to issue one hundred and sixty, we're at eighty eight thousand again. But the comic just continues to to make slow and steady strides. Now, of course, issue one hundred and sixty three that was a twenty five cent issue that sells seven hundred and sixty four thousand copies. Um, as I mentioned, this saga, there's no evidence, and you see it clearly in this graph here that the idea of the twenty five percent issue was that it was going to bring in a lot of new readers. It clearly didn't. I mean, you can it, you just look at the graph. That was a, a failure of a marketing campaign, but it did get a lot of books out. I know a lot of retailers are not thrilled about that. This was basically the month they, they didn't make as much money as normal from Walking Dead. And maybe that's part of the reason why you do see a drop, uh, actually. So they did this 25 cent merchant, you know, marketing campaign, and the sales actually decline after that. But uh, we stay at 65, we go back to 71. Um, and then it does drop uh, further when you're, uh, if, before we get to the very end, uh, we get down to the high 40s. Uh, right at 49, 51, you get some of those uh, those titles in there. And then it, it bumps back up again for the last several issues. And then it's it's rather surprised canceled when that final issue hits at 111,000. Pretty impressive. Here's the, the full picture again of what everything looks like. Now, here's the, the image that I'm, I'm interested. In. I think this helps put it all in perspective a little bit. This is what I've done is I've taken out the five issues. I've just just zeroed them out. And what you see here in terms of the overall growth is you see a very nice steady uh, march to issue 100. And then you see hyper growth from issue 100 to about 165 or so, where it's certainly um, peaking and, and falling. But in many cases, what you see is a new storyline comes out, a new arc, and the sales go up. And then the, the audience slowly trickles off for about six to eight issues. And then a new arc will begin. The sales bump right back up again. 
Um, certainly this points to some speculators in the picture, but it also just is a healthier line. And if you look at comics in the 80s and the 90s from Marvel and DC, when it was on a healthy track, it would look more like this. It wasn't all just decline. Comics are always kind of declining by natural state, but then that's why you'd bring in a special artist or a special storyline. You'd bump the numbers back up and kind of reset this clock. This is the opposite approach of relaunching the comic over and over again with number one issues and, and variant covers and everything else as, as gimmicks. This is more of a traditional model, and clearly it worked. So as we look at a trend for this model, we see, okay, once you've taken out all the, the, the big issues that kind of tilt things up, then we're at 7,000 to 49,000. And it wasn't a decline there, certainly, for the last uh, 12, 14 issues. But even here with this, you know, and we take a look, you can see some of the peaks here with some of the extra numbers at 73,000, 86,000. Um, overall, when you remove the anniversary issues, you remove the special issues, the series still had an overall trend increase of 600%. It's crazy. So a couple thoughts. Um, first off, you know, The Walking Dead did what no other ongoing titles managed to do. Had sustainable, continual growth over the course of 15 years. Now, story arcs would rise and fall over time, but you see big events and anniversary issues create strengths for the ongoing line each time. Every time they'd roll one out, it actually helped. They were doing a really good job, and this is credit to Kirkman. Whenever they do one of these marketing campaigns, it would add it would add strength to the overall comic. The first issue was the third lowest selling issue of the series, and that's only because retailers had ordered issue two and issue three before knowing how well issue one would do. It was all uphill from there. And during the last year of the series, the book certainly began to decline like a typical big two book does to, uh, but <laughs> to correct the slide, Kirkman basically ended the title. And how about that? Rather than <laughs> just, just said, all right, we've told our story, we're done. Um, and as I mentioned before, the 25 cent uh, issue was the only gimmick or anniversary style book that had no real positive effect on sales. Now, very quickly, uh, because it's a very convoluted mess, it, the trade story of The Walking Dead encompasses roughly uh, well over 100 different variants of, of soft copies, of collections, of special things for bookstores. It's very hard to get a good run on trade. But what I can do is look at the initial trade interest. So when the first trade came out, volume one, and we look by year uh, over the course of, of the series, what you see is that it increases steadily over 11 years. We don't have anything for 2003, of course, because that's when the title launched. But basically, every single year it came out, we saw this super growth. And they still, you see with the trades the same thing you see with the, the monthly comics. You see a decline there toward the end. But in general, we're going for under, you know, around, around 2,000, under 2,500, up to knocking it out of the park at 25,000 copies uh, at its peak and really settling in over 22,500 for a good, long, sustainable time. I mean, this this would go on for basically six, almost seven years. It was selling just like this. And this doesn't include all the special editions, the hardcovers, all the other things that are going on with trades that made it pretty impressive. So in conclusion, this is the goat of indie books. No doubt about it. This is, uh, this is the, the success story. This is the template. But what's most fascinating about it is there's clearly some lessons in Walking Dead and how you do a book. You know, they committed to the bit. They did. They were not in color. It wasn't a. It was a black and white book. It didn't matter. People still had interest. Kept the same creative team on, and it just built. It built month over month. It brought people in. I remember a lot of people are not thrilled with Charlie's art when he came in and replaced Tony Moore. And and uh, but over the course of the series, he won him over by just putting out consistent great work. And and I think it it pays off in the numbers and what you see. And also the marketing efforts that they did. I mean, this is, if you're an indie company, hell, if you're one of the big two, this is the type of marketing, this is the type of promotion, this is how you use anniversary issues to your benefit. And you get something very strong, very sustainable that you can you can hook off of. And certainly uh, having a hit TV show does not hurt. But right now the MCU has hit movies. You'd think they would be able to replicate some of the same success with a title like The Avengers or any number of things. It's uh, it, it just makes you think, but... Definitely hats off to uh, to Robert and Charlie, who've put out an amazing book. 
And uh, it's it's a, it was an absolute pleasure to actually get to go through the numbers with something that has this kind of growth. I mean, I, that I can't ask for anything more. So what do you think? Uh, whether you're a fan of the book or not a fan of the book, you got to be impressed by this, right? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Hey, you can see all my contact information in the description to the video. Uh, if you, yeah, thanks for listening.